Hello everyone, today in our series of DocPlex's KOL interviews, we have with us Dr. Satyamurthy, who has worked as the Director of Cardiology at Apollo Hospitals, Chennai. He is the recipient of Padma Shri Award and Dr. B.C. Roy National Award, among many prestigious awards. He has 240 publications in his name and in the form of articles, peer-reviewed journals and book chapters. Thank you Dr. Satyamurthy for sharing your valuable time with us. It is my pleasure. So what are the diagnostic criteria for hypertrophic cardiomyopathy and can you elaborate on different management approaches for the same? The diagnostic uh, approaches are there is a left ventricle outflow obstruction because of the hypertrophy of the septum and producing systolic anti-motion of the mitral valve. There will be some amount of mitral regurgitation and varying degrees of mitral regurgitation I mean and there will be diastolic dysfunction in the form of restriction of flow or restriction of uh, left ventricular cavity in accepting diastolic flow. All these things will produce uh, symptoms like breathlessness and when we examine we find the left ventricular outflow obstruction murmur and also mitral regurgitation sometimes both. And regarding the therapeutic approaches First is medical line of management where patients are mildly symptomatic like beta blockers or calcium blockers who don't tolerate beta blockers along with disopramide. And if any arrhythmias are there, we have to treat those arrhythmias, particularly supraventral arrhythmias like atrial fibrillation. In those cases, we consider hemadron to prevent recurrence of atrial fibrillation. And the, after the, if the patients are resistant to medical line of treatment, next is electrical therapy that is dual chamber pacemaker therapy where the AV delay is adjusted in such a way that left ventral outflow obstruction can be minimized or LV outflow gradients are reduced but not very effective. Third is some suitable cases we try to uh, inject alcohol into the first septal artery to reduce the size of the myocardium by producing a controlled myocardial infarction or myocardial necrosis. Fourth is surgical approach where we try to resect a portion of the left ventricular outflow through the aortic approach and some, some of these patients may need, require mitral valve replacement also when the mitral regurgitation is significant or severe. Dr. Satyamurthy, can you briefly explain the alcohol septal ablation procedure for HOCM management? The culprit vessel or the target vessel is the first septal artery which supplies the left ventral outflow tract. First, we will identify during the angiogram and this vessel will be supplying the uh, superior portion of the interventricular septum and it gets squeezed during systole that is called milking effect. When once we identify that, we um, uh, usual guiding catheter, coronary angioplasty guiding catheter is placed. Through that we pass a guide wire into the first septal artery, over that which we will pass a balloon that is called over the wire balloon. When once bal balloon is placed there, we inflate the balloon and check whether the pressure is get f falling. Then through the central lumen of the, uh, balloon, uh, the balloon catheter, we inject contrast. This contrast should not opacify right side of the interventricular septum. It should only opacify the uh, superior portion of the interventricular septum. When once we confirm that the culprit vessel and after inflation of the balloon, when we inject the contrast, it should not, it should not regurgitate into the left anterior descending main artery to prevent alcohol getting regurgitating into the left anterior descending artery. When once we confirm that, we inject 2 ml of alcohol slowly over the period of 2 minutes. Point first initially 1 ml, then every 2, uh, two minutes point, point 0.2 ml. At the end we flush it and then we remove the catheter. And it over the period of time there will be scarring and there will be reduction in the myocardial uh, septal thickness 
was a period of three months. And immediately during the procedure, we see left hand outflow gradient coming down. For doing this procedure, we need a resting gradient of at least 30 millimeters or provocative gradient of 60 millimeters. On the table, when we find there is no gradient, we try to induce some ectopics through the right ventricle and see whether there is any inducible, inducible gradient. If there is no gradient, that means it is a successful procedure. So, what is the survival rate after alcohol septal ablation for obstructive hypertrophic uh, cardiomyopathy? If these people present to us before the left ventral septal hypertrophy becomes um, uh, less than 30 millimeters, the results are very gratifying. 85, per, 85 to 90 percent survival at the end of 10 years. But some of them may develop ventricular ectopics and may develop ventricular tachycardias, which we must keep following by doing Holter monitoring. Some of these patients may need ICD insertion to prevent sudden death. So, are there any contraindications of using alcohol septal ablation for obstructive hypertrophic uh, cardiomyopathy? Yes. If there is more than grade 3, uh, 3 out of 4 MR, severe MR I mean, if there is pulmonary hypertension, if there is a myxomatous degeneration of the mitral valve associated or if there is associated mid ventricular obstruction, these patients should, cannot, they are not suitable candidates for alcohol septal ablation. So, what are the post-surgery management guidelines for patients who have undergone this treatment? We should do an echo once in a year at least and patient need regular follow-up with Holter monitoring once a year for any uh, arrhythmias. If patient is likely to develop any ventricular ta tachyarrhythmias, it is always better to implant with a ICD to prevent sudden death. So, Dr. Satyamurti, can you explain the comparison of effects of atrioventricular conduction tissue for alcohol septal ablation versus the surgical septal uh, myectomy? In alcohol septal ablation, 10 percent of patients may develop AV blocks. They may need pacemaker insertion. Whereas in surgical, as you are only taking a cone of the ventricular septal myocardium, the incidence of uh, uh, pacemaker necessary is as low as 5 percent. But what we do is we always put a temporary pacemaker while doing this procedure of alcohol septal ablation. If patient does not develop any AV blocks during first 48 to 72 hours means their likelihood of developing complete heart block or needing pacemaker are very, very negligible. If patient has a, having pre-existing right bundle branch block or left bundle branch block, they are most likely candidates to develop complete heart block. So, we can always predict during the procedure. So, are there any thoughts that you would like to share with the members of DocPlexus either on alcohol septal ablation in HOCM or in, part, in particular or anything in cardiology? Some of this procedure is gratifying. It has not picked up to the extent we expected it. And I think some of these most suitable candidates, they should try and identify and try to do this procedure and become, make it more and more popular procedure because it is a non-invasive procedure, non-surgical procedure. By chance, if it fails, you can always send them for surgical ablation that can be kept as a last resort. Thank you very much. To stay updated on our latest scale videos and interviews, please follow us on Twitter, like us on our Facebook page and subscribe on our YouTube channel. Happy Doc Plexing!